Hi and welcome back to this new video. As said in the previous video about the vasors, we would like to discuss some examples in this video, which is given here as example one. We have a current which is given in time domain like this: eight cosine six t t minus thirty degrees amps, and the following is the voltage V is equal to two times sine fifty t plus ten degrees in volts. What we want is we want uh, the uh, uh, phase notation, polar representation for both of them. Okay. What you need to recognize here first is if the time domain representation is given in cosine or the sine notation uh, form. It is mandatory it is given in the cosine representation to go from the time domain to the polar notation. It's just that is very important. So for the first case, it's just taking the amplitude in the phase of your current so we do capital I and use the amplitude of the given time domain representation and use phase minus 30 degrees and that's it that's actually the representation for the current for voltage we need to first convert it to the cosine representation. How do we do that? Now you know cosine and sine are 90 degrees out of phase. That means you need to check what you need to add in the cosine term to go actually using the cosine uh, notation to the sine notation. Now what you need is cosine 50t minus 90 degrees. That's actually what you need to go directly to the original sign and you already had 10 degrees so you add it also up and you get this now you can also rewrite this like 50 degrees minus 80 degree 50 t minus 80 degrees that's actually what the final representation will be and if you go from here then you can use the phase notation much more easily which is 2 phase minus 80 degrees volts. Remember, this is not V equals 2 phase 10 degrees volts. This is not correct. So keep that in mind. You need to have a cosine as your reference signal. Okay, that's for example one. It's really easy. Just uh, stay tuned. Let's go to example two. All right. What we have is a current given in the polar form i is equal to 4 phase 7 degrees amperes and the radian frequency is 100 radian per second it's already given what we want is convert this representation in rectangular form how do we do that okay that's very interesting what we can do is we can draw this that will be helpful so we give it a just sketch the situation uh, you can make a very simple sketch. You already know that this is the imaginary part, that is the real part. So we already know that there is a vector of length 4 and there is a phase here of 7 degrees. That's actually what you know. Okay, then you can do the following. The x component of this is given here like x and the y component here is given by j y now you know if you know the x component and the y component you can go from the polar form this notation to the rectangular notation actually what you can say is i is equal to x plus 
j y. So you need actually the x and you need the y. What is x? The x is equal to if you go if you look at the blue arrow, the length of the blue arrow is 4. So this this one, the length is 4. That means you can calculate it like 4 cosine theta which is 70 and you can also calculate y and y is 4 sine 70 degrees so in total you can say in rectangle for rectangular form I is equal to 4 times cosine 70 degrees plus J 4 times sine 70 degrees. Or you can write it like this. 4 times the cosine of 70 degrees plus J sine 70 degrees. Okay, now if you calculate this out, you get 1.36 plus J 2.76 amperes. If you also want to do the uh, time domain representation of this, and of course based on the cosine representation as a reference signal, then you can say the following. You know already the phase, that's 70 degrees, and you already know the amplitude, and you know the radian frequency, it's actually a given. So you can say I, which is given in the time domain, is 4 cosine 100t plus 70 degrees, and also in amperes. And that's actually for example 2. Okay, let's uh, look at another example, example 3, and a similar example, but that will be helpful considering the phase, so example 3. Okay, now in this case we have a voltage, V, given as a complex notation, but this time in rectangular form, minus 3, plus J2. Okay, now we have to be careful. Let's draw this. It will be helpful. Let's make a sketch. There is a real part and an imaginary part. Okay, now the real part is minus 3 and the imaginary part is J2. That means we have it in this form and that means if you draw the arrow from the origin which is this this is actually the vector v okay now if you want the polar representation also the time domain representation what you need to be you need to be careful about is the phase which you're talking about is from this so i will use the red from this from the real part all the way to the arrow the blue arrow so that is actually theta this is theta and not the theta which you get actually if you just use the arctangent formula what you get is you get the mirrored version of that so actually you get this that's three and this is minus j2 and this is what you get and you you will calculate this which is not correct so you need to add uh, 180 degrees to calculate the correct phase. So what I mean by that is for phase theta, the actual phase is 180 degrees because it is not in the first or the fourth quadrant, it is in the second quadrant. So this is the first quadrant, this is the second quadrant, this is the third quadrant and it is the fourth quadrant. So if you are in the second or the third quadrant, you need to use the formula in a different way, like theta is equal to 180 degrees 
plus heart tangent and then the imaginary part that's 2 divided by minus 3 and if you calculate it out you get approximately 124 degrees okay now for the magnitude of the blue line that's the r is equal to is actually the same that doesn't change is the square of minus 3 plus the square of 2 and then you take the square root of that summation then you get square root of 13 and that is approximately 3.61 then the polar rotation or the polar form will be v is equal to 3.61 phase 124 degrees volts that's actually what is in polar form now if you want a time domain representation which is now really easy because from the polar notation going then to the time uh, notation is time domain notation is very really easy to just note what is the amplitude and then the phase and if you also know the uh, radian frequency which is not given here but I will give it here now it is 300 radian per second it doesn't change the calculation we have done thus far but it can be helpful now in this part for V in terms of time is equal to 3.61 cosine it is 300T which is the radian frequency which is given now and plus 124 degrees and that's also in volts that's actually what you needed for the time domain representation of this signal okay now and there is another uh, video i will uh, discuss another uh, example which is uh, which will take more time so i will leave it there we will uh, use the addition of two time domain signals and use polar notation to do that in a much more easy way so we will keep in touch and see you next time and give a thumbs up and share this video so it will uh, reach more, much more people. Thank you very much for your uh, attention and see you again next time.